The lesson topic for this video is relations and functions. So to begin with, just some key vocabulary. Number one, relation. A relation is a set of ordered pairs. And we've talked a lot about ordered pairs, and ordered pairs are any coordinate, x and y, right? So this here is a set of ordered pairs. Notice that a lot of times we'll put these, um, I should probably know the real word for them, but I call them squiggly brackets. <laughs> so we have the squiggly brackets on the ends and then commas in between each um, coordinate pair. So this right here is a relation. It just shows the relationship between um, a x value and its corresponding y value. And there's some vocabulary that goes along with those x and y values. First of all, the x values. Well, x values uh, for any coordinate pair, our x values are called the inputs, and the set of inputs is called the domain. All right, so if we were to list all of our x values here, one, here's our first x value, right? Two, negative three, three, and six. That is our set of inputs, or the domain, for this set of ordered pairs. The second term goes along with our y values, and those terms are outputs, or range. So our outputs is, are all of our y values, so negative 4, 0, 7, 5, 0, 7, 5, and you'll notice that 7 appears again. We do not need to list that 7 again. So it showed up here, so we wrote it down with our outputs. We don't have to repeat it. So this is all of, these are all of the outputs we have, which is then called our range. Many times we will actually want to list our domain or range in um, order from least to greatest. All right, so what makes a relation or a set of ordered pairs different from a function? Well, a function is a special relation, which again, you could think about as a relationship, a special relation where each input has a single output. In other words, every input has one and only one output. Let's see what that would mean in this example right here. Okay, so does every value, every input value, have one and only one output? Well, here's an input value, 1, okay? Its output is negative 4. Is there another ordered pair that has an input of 1 and has a different output? That's not a 1, that's not a 1, that's not a 1, and that's not a 1. So the answer is no so far. This input has one and only one output. The 2 has an output of 0. There's not another input of 2. Negative 3 has an output of 7. Is there another negative 3 input? There is not. 3 is different than negative 3. And then we have 3 as an input with an output of 5, and 6 as an input with an output of 7. So this relation right here is, in fact, a function. It's a special relation where each input has a single output. And we're going to look at that type of uh, question a lot more during this lesson. Okay, so sometimes it is difficult to remember how to determine if a relation is a function. Um, and we're going to look at a lot of examples on the next screen of, you know, is this a function or not? So here's a way to help you remember. Think about this fast food super value meal example that I'm about to present here. Okay, so here are four people. Nice stick drawings here for me, right? Here are four people that went through a drive through window at this fast food restaurant and it's what they ordered, what uh, meal number they ordered, and how much they were charged. Okay, let's take a look at this as an input-output situation. The input, what they input, is what they order at the window, and what they output is how much money they have to give for that m meal. All right? So person number one here, they ordered value meal number three, and they were charged $6. The next person ordered value meal number one, and they were charged $7. The next person ordered value meal number two and were charged $4. And lastly, the 
the fourth person ordered value meal number three and was charged seven dollars. All right. Well, what's the problem? Did you notice while I was talking about this input output set of data? The problem is this person right here ordered value meal number three and was charged six dollars. Whereas this fourth person also ordered value meal number three but was charged seven dollars. What we've got here is we've got a single input that have uh, that input has two different outputs six and seven. Therefore this is not a function. It is a relation because relations are any set of ordered pairs but it is not a function. So what I always say is if you were at a restaurant, right, and you ordered something um, and were charged a different amount of money, maybe you were charged more than the person that was in front of you, that's not fair, so it's not a function. If it's not fair, it's not a function. If you order the same meal, you need to be charged the same amount. Hopefully that will help you understand when something is or is not a function. Okay, so on the next screen we're going to look at a bunch of different data sets and we're going to determine whether they are functions or not. But before we do that, I want to talk about how data can be um, presented in so many different ways. So here are the four ways you're going to see. First of all, a list. And a list is exactly what you see up here, a list of our data points. So that is that. Second, you might see um, a, a table representing data, and you might see a, a table as a vertical table or a horizontal table, so always pay attention to what you see. So a vertical table would be a list of our x's and our y's, our inputs and our outputs, again inputting the value for x and outputting the value for y, just like our ordered pairs, x, y, like that. So we've got 1, negative 4, 2, 0, negative 3, 7, 3, 5, and 6, 7. So again, that's just the data right here listed in a vertical table. You also could see a horizontal table where your x's are in the uh, top and your y's are in the bottom. So now we've got that same data set, 1 for x, negative 4 for y, and 2, 0 negative 3, 7, 3, 5, and 6, 7. Next you might see what's called a mapping. And a mapping uses ovals, typically like this, and your inputs are listed on the left-hand side. So we could have, and usually they're going to be in, like this is where I was talking earlier about numerical order from smallest to greatest. They don't have to be, but I'm going to list it negative 3. What I found is my smallest x value is negative 3. And then we've got 1, 2, 3, and 6. So 1, 2, 3, and 6. And our outputs, our smallest is negative 4, and then we have 0, 5, and 7. I also discussed this earlier. Notice this only has four values in this oval because we had negative 4, 0, 5, and then 7 was listed twice. We do not list 7 twice in our oval. So although there are 5 input values, there are only 4 output values, and that is okay. So now the mapping goes like this. We are going to draw an arrow from each, matching, or from each input to its matching output. So for this point right here, 1, negative 4, we're going to draw an arrow from 1 to negative 4. And then from 2 to 0 for 2, 0, and then negative 3 to 7, so negative 3 to 7, from 3 to 5, and lastly from 6 to 7. And that is a mapping, so you will see that on the next screen as well. Lastly, you might see a graph of the data, and you guys have seen graphs before, but a graph of the data would be points uh, as coordinate pairs. So 1, negative 4, I'm going to do this really quickly without any tick marks. 1, negative 4 would be like right in here. 2, uh, two 0 would be right in here. 
Uh, negative 3, 7 would be up in here. 3, 5. 3, 5 would be right in here. And lastly, 6, 7 would be right in here, approximately. So those are different ways we can represent data. Okay, so here are those different types of representations that we just discussed. And what I would like you to do is pause the video, and then for each set of data, I'd like you to list the domain and range. Again, the domain is our x values, our inputs, and our range is our y values, our outputs. And then I'd like you to secondly determine if the relation is a function for each of these. Once you've done that, go ahead and check back to see how you did. All right, so I am not going to list each domain and range for these uh, data sets, but I would like you to um, ask if you have any questions. But you would just be listing all these x values for your domain and all the y values for your range, all the x values here and the y values, etc. x values, y values. So let me know if you have questions on those. Okay, so let's go through if um, each of these are a function or not. The question again is, does every value of the input have exactly one output? So does every x value have exactly one y value? Notice in this example here, this is a function. The x value of this point right here is negative 5, and there's no other point with an x value of negative 5. Same thing happens with the negative 3. There's an, inp an input of negative 3. There's only one output for that, and that's 3 here. Negative 2 as an input has one output, and negative 1 has one value of the output. Uh, you might remember that there's something called the vertical line test that helps you determine if a graph is a function. If you can draw a vertical line through every point and it doesn't go through another point, it is a function. So this one is a function. All right, let's go up to this one over here. Does every value of the input have exactly one output? Well, there's a negative 1x value here and another negative 1x value here. So if I ordered Happy Meal number negative 1 and somebody else ordered Happy Meal negative 1, did they have, were they charged the same price? The answer is no. So this is not fair. So it's not a function. The next one, this data set, we've got a negative 1 and a 1. So again, I ordered meal number negative 1. I ordered meal uh, positive 1, negative 3, positive 1. So this person ordered the same meal, right, as this person here. Were they charged the same amount? No, they weren't. So it is not a function. Alright, the mappings down here. Let's look at the mapping A first. If I ordered, again, these meals, am I charged anything unfairly? No, I am not. This is fair, so it is a function. And this mapping here, if I ordered value meal num uh, negative 5, I was charged negative $8. I know the negatives don't make a lot of sense there, but I hope you get the picture. If somebody else ordered negative 5, they were charged negative 2. This is not okay, so it is not a function. And the one on the right here, all right, every value of the input is different, so none of them could have a different output. Be careful on this. Sometimes people think since the y value, there's a 1 here and a 1 here, that people think that that is not a function. But it is. Because think about it as the happy meal or the value meal process again. If somebody ordered value meal 8 and it was charged a dollar, and somebody else ordered value meal 10, it was charged a dollar, that is okay. Two different meals can cost the same price. It's just that one specific meal cannot be charged two different prices. More on that when we practice in class.